Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about the basic and general steps in structural analysis and design. This is applicable for any type of structure and we need to follow the same rules for any type. First, let's have a definition of a structure. When we say structure, it means that we have one part or combination of too many parts in an integrated system to take the applied loads and transfer it to a safe support. Safe support is generally the ground or foundation. You see here we have different types of structure. It is frame structure, truss structure or compression structure, tension structure like tables and also bending active or just some type of old bridge structures and also tower structures or high-rise or mid-rise buildings. These are all types of structures and also simple structures like simply supported beam, one beam or just retaining system. That's all part of structures. We have, in general, we have two load types to apply on the structure. It is Gravity load, like dead load, self pet up structure, live load, water load or water ponding, snow, rain, and any type of this gravity load. And also lateral loads like water pressure, soil pressure, wind, earthquake. And remember, if we have any inclined or oriented loading, we can just, for simplicity, and mainly for to apply in most of the softwares we need to just convert it to lateral and gravity loads so when we talk about structure we are going to define the loads from environment or just any type of loads and apply two elements that we call it load bearing elements you, you know that in a big structure let's say like a building all elements are not load bearing we have main load bearing elements and the rest is just infill materials or just something like finishes or infill parts load bearing elements in general for gravity we have columns walls beams and for lateral we have bracing system shear walls and infill between columns if it's structural and if we need them to take some loads and also we have columns in general we are going to transfer the loads or take the lateral loads by shear walls or bracing system but if we have to we are going to apply some lateral loads to columns as well in this system just make sure that you have enough capacity for columns in bending that is very critical so in every structural analysis and design we have three steps first step is modeling modeling means that you need to understand what is the structure or geometry of the structure first What's the material and what type of loadings we are going to apply on that or what type of loads are around the structure to take them and also what are the restraints. So modeling doesn't mean that definitely sh necessarily, necessarily should be in software. It should be just some hand calcs, very simply supported beam or if it's very complicated structure should be in a software first we need to understand the geometry that is span length height of elements angles between elements and all these sort of things and uh, for material we need to know what is the type of what is the material used in structure is it steel reinforced concrete aluminium timber or combination of these things like let's say some parts are column, steel column, some parts are just concrete flooring, and we can use all these combinations in our structure. 
third part is our next step is loading. We need to define what are the loads around the structure to take. Gravity loads, as said before, should be dead load, self rate of the element, live load, water, water ponding in gravity, and soil. If we have any soil, let's say if we have some roof garden or just pond or a pool in the building, it, it is applying some gravity loads on the elements. And also we have lateral loads like earthquake, wind, water pressure, soil pressure. In some special case, we may have settlement, that is type of loading on the structure, that should be transition or rotation of the found, uh, support points. And also we may have impact loads like car hit that uh, we have a lot in parking design or just some car wash structural design. We need to just care about the car hit points and car loads and also free falling object on the structure that is type of impact load. And in just very special cases, we may have blast loading or explosion. The last step in, rest in modeling is to define the restraints. We have three types of restraint. It is just rigid, semi-rigid, pin, or just simple. Here we have three different types in general. Fixed part or the rigid part is just taking bending, shear, and axial. And in some cases, we may have torsion as well. Fixed support, that is just we don't have any bending around that. Bending is released and we have just restraint in vertical and horizontal direction. And finally, if we have just roller support or we say that pin support, we have just one vertical support. Uh, in some cases, we, we, ha we may have semi-rigid. It means that just let's say um, this bending is not completely released and we have some degree of restraint in bending or in rotation. That is type of a spring support. It can, it can be in rotation or transition as well. It is just something between fully fixed and fully released. Next step is analysis. We defined the model. We know what is the geometry, what's the material, what's the restraint, and loading types. So the next step is just to analysis that. Just here is different types of structure model in different softwares as a model. Uh, as I said here, just we don't need model in software if it is just very simple structure. We can just model, let's say, like simple structure, like retaining wall or just simple beam. Uh, we can do just hand calcs. But anyway, we need to have simple model of that. For analysis, we have different types of analysis. We have model analysis that is mainly deals with the overall mass and stiffness of structure to find the natural period. That is very critical point or critical part of the structure analysis, model analysis to find that. And how many, uh, what's the portion of the mass contributing in generally in three first modes of the structure. The most important part in analysis is the combination of loads. In model, we have defined all types of loads. And the next step is just to combine the loads. In general, we have two limits. We have serviceability limit state that is mainly talks about the performance under normal service loads. Uh, let's say no factored load. And it checks the deflection, vibration, cracking, and all sorts of things as performance based or just performance of the structure. We call it serviceability. And the other one is just strength limit state. That is that 
about the strength of the structure or structural safety under extreme conditions like maximum load or severe load, severe events. That is combined factored load and combination of factored loads in strength. We increase the loads while from the other side we're going to check the applied loads with the ultimate capacity of the section as well. So we're going to apply load combinations and see what is the analysis result under this load combination. Also we have different two main types of analysis. We call it static analysis and dynamic analysis. For static analysis, it, it can be linear or nonlinear. That is very most common type of analysis. And the other one is just dynamic analysis that is just mainly dealing with the critical parts or if we have moving loads or loads changing with time, we're going to have dynamic analysis. It can be again linear and nonlinear. The main difference between static and dynamic analysis here, just static analysis deal with stable loads, non-changing, I mean that the load's not changing with time, like weight, but dynamic analysis considers moving forces like earthquake, focusing on how structure respond over the time. It means that here we have change of load over the time. So here we said that yeah, it is static and dynamic change definition. That is just mainly the main difference is just change of load over the time. In static we don't have, but in dynamic we have change of load over the time, like response analysis of the earthquake or just any changing load on the time. And also we have linear and nonlinear analysis that's applicable for both static and dynamic analysis. Linear analysis assumes that also assumes small deformations, but nonlinear analysis is just considers a large deformation and nonlinearity of materials and geometry effects. In here we have in the top graph, we have linear part and nonlinear part. If we're just going to have linear analysis, we assume that the stress and strain relation is it remains in linear, remains in linear state. But when we consider nonlinear, it means that we have larger deformation here. Strain is going just over the ultimate point and we don't have stress a linear stress strain relationship. It is just we can define easily in most of the softwares, and we don't need to do most of the time. We don't need to do any hand calcs. Uh, structure is capable to do all these checks for us. And here we have static and dynamic analysis. Uh, that is static is just loads not changing over the time, but for dynamic like spring or just excitation of the car moving on the floor or just earthquake loading here we have load change over the time from analysis part we need some outputs for next step our outputs from analysis, or actually the main reason for analysis, are to know what are the loads in elements and support points. Element uh, loads are internal forces like bending, axial force, shear, for, shear force, and torsion. We need to know what is stress level, what is strain level under the load combinations in two different limit states: serviceability and ultimate. And, and we need to have this deflection counter for lateral and vibration, for lateral and vertical, yeah, that we need to check with the limits we have in the codes and standards. And also the last one is we need to understand the reaction at support points. And here, again, we need 
all these things under combined loads. It is very rare to have just one action under just one single load. And so the main purpose of analysis is to have all these outputs for next step, that is design stage. Here, you see that is we have I have graphed some from software that is analysis of the applied loads on the structure and this is the deflection limit and also stress on structure under the bottom line. Last step in analysis and design in is design process. So in analysis, we know what are the loads on each element. And now we are going to choose a section that can take that forces. Forces are just sometimes it's just bending, but most of the time just bending some or actual or shear or torsion. But in most of the time we have all in one element and we need to choose a section to take all type of these loads in combination. So for design, we generally talk about the section, section of area, a section of element that we need to choose and put for the element to take the load. And so element types are beam, columns, for rafter, slab, wall, tendon, and we need to, uh, uh, in the analysis stage, we need to have some default section size, uh, section for members to run the analysis. But in design stage, we need to make sure that the applied section or assigned section is capable of the applied loads and combinations. And also we need to check for <coughs> punching on the slabs mainly. If it is mainly if it is elevated this lab and we we will talk about the punching effect on just mid column, edge column, and corner column, and that is the concept is the same, but here we may have just some different calculation based on the area of the slab around the column. And just remember after analysis, when you're going to design and change the sections, if you need, sometimes the default sections are very strong, sometimes is very weak, and we need to modify and correct the sections. Remember always to reanalyze to reanalyze the structure to have most accurate members, especially because when you're going to change the element size, the stiffness of the structure is changing and also the self weight of the structure is changing and sometimes it has big effect on the structure it's just small structure but in big structures yeah, it, it should be just very really low effect and after element design or assigning correct section to the applied load in analysis stage we're going to have connection design a connection could be just simple or rigid connection. Simple means that we have we don't have bending effect, but for rigid connection, we always have bending load to be taken by the connection point or by the joint. And after all, we're going to transfer all the loads from the structure to the ground. So it means that we need to have some element between the structure and ground that we call it footing or foundation. So for foundation, we're going to have two main checks. Soil bearing capacity, if the applied load on the soil is safe for the soil, we don't have any soil rupture, and deflection under the foundation is acceptable. And this is the main, and also the foundation itself is capable of the applied loads from the structure. That is foundation is an interface structure between main superstructure and soil that should be strong enough to take the load and transfer it to the ground. So you know that here we have in general two types of foundation. It should be deep foundation if the soil is not strong enough and we need to transfer the loads to a deeper 
layer of the soil or a stronger bed. In that case, we need deep or pile foundation, or otherwise, if the soil is strong enough to take the load, shallow foundation like pad footing is enough. Here I have just some design ratio. You know that here, when we apply design and analysis, here we need to have always design ratio in a safe side. That is always just over one, let's say, or just yeah, if. We have just green or here green it means that if we have safe or if it is red or just yeah, it depends on the software as well yeah, yeah but make sure that you have correct design ratio after assigning sections for the analysis and here is just the yeah, foundation design it is just a schematic diagram to see we need to apply all the loads from the structure to design the foundation and transferring to the soil so this is the very basic understanding of the difference between design and analysis and also steps in steps from scratch to finalize design in any type of structure. Thanks for watching and we may talk in, in more details about each of these elements in next videos. Thank you.